Welcome to Familiar Territory, an anime podcast hosted by two white dudes who've been friends for over 15 years. Here we talk about the history and influence of anime, as well as review anime new and old. So grab your talking cap and transform into some comfy clothes as we step into a familiar territory. My name is Grant. And I'm Brantley. Heads up, spoilers on the way. Check the description, see if you're safe to listen. Grant, I need you to be honest with me. Uh Uh-huh. Are we stupid? (laughs) A little bit. I think so. I have gone back. Sometimes I'll re-listen to our episodes. I'm like, oh, we didn't talk about that. Or, oh, of course this is, you know, I I sometimes feel like we're really harsh sometimes. We can nitpick and we can be really, really focused in on something that we really hate and it can kind of take away the problems of everything. The problem is, is watching Yuki, you know, you think there's something here and you just keep searching and searching and you never fucking find it. The problem with Yuki Yuna is the more I watch Yuki Yuna, the worse it gets. <laughs> yeah, it's if if I'm not stupid, which I might be, you are. You okay? So I so really, I guess I should not have asked we at the beginning because that was the conditional that that put it on a maybe. But okay, got it, got it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I am also stupid, but uh, this series sure makes me feel stupid. I there, I mean, there's plenty of media that we watch that. I have to take kind of a second try at before I kind of get everything, um, whether because it's it's fast paced or complicated or you know what have you. Um, sometimes it doesn't all stick the first time, and like I get that. Um, but with we're this is three seasons of content of Yuki Yuna, and I feel like I in every one of these I just. I walk away with more questions than answers in and not in like a cool, fun, generative way. Yeah. It's mm, but but you're right where it's like there's something there. It's like you have something to say, right? Say it. And it doesn't <sighs> Let, let's talk about it. we we watched Yugi Yuna, the great Monkai chapter. Uh and we went in thinking it was a sequel, and we later found out it was not a sequel. But kind of is. A little bit. But sort of is. Do you see what we're saying, people? This Yuki Yuna is... Yeah, it's like... It's like... <laughs> so so the thing is, so you have Yuki Yuna, right? It's a show about being trapped in a hell bubble by a god who kind of sucks. And it's the, he makes girls fight demons, and then he uh, has them sacrifice themselves so that... The, the world can be better. Uh, and you finish it with them killing God or separating themselves from God or doing something from God. I don't know. It's not clear. Uh, and Or maybe it is and we're stupid. But so I thought that we would be coming into the show as a, a, a sequel where we, we see how the world is working under uh, the, the God Shinju. And Shinju is gone, and how are the world? How's the world? But instead, you really should put the Sama at the end. <laughs> should I? I don't want to get us to get fucking struck by lightning. <laughs> Doing this for Shinju Sama. <laughs> so, so like that sounds like an interesting topic. But instead, they create an entire division of girls to fight against his 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 little cronies, um, and they're called the Sentinels, and they are awful. Not because they're te- necessarily like bad characters; they're just so uninteresting. Uh, so, it, like to me, that's just such a bad, a bad thing to do. If the Sentinels existed prior and they existed in the show as it was ongoing, then I could see that being an interesting spinoff. But the fact they were invented for this chapter makes it so disconnected from what we understood as a concept initially. And they're not the only ones who are added for that purpose. Oh, absolutely not. So, Yuki Yuna as a hero was mediocre to bad. Washio Sumi chapter was bad to terrible. The hero chapter was mediocre to bad again. I think the Grant Man- Mankai chapter is bad to just bad. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's just bad. I have a phrase for this written down in my notes. Uh, so I apologize. If I, oh, if I of course you do. Little, you nerd. If I use this more than once, but it's not better, less worse. Yes. 
that's that's fine. Do you mind if I give a little preamble about kind of our history with Yuki Yuna and what we're getting in here? Because <laughs> there might be Yuki Yuna fans, like dedicated people who are who are here to you know they want to know our our novel opinions on this. And I don't want to turn them you away. Make right fun away. of us for being wrong. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying to prevent. Um, yes, 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 yes. Look, yes. so I want to say that on some some level, the base authorial intentions of Yuki Yuna as a series are something that we agree with. That like we're face to face with a mental health crisis, and that requires mutual aid. Totally square on that, right? That's uh, that is a part of Yuki Yuna, um, and and we like those narrative bits um you know youth are exploited in the form of you know the the hero club and the sentinels and you know like okay clear got it yeah totally on the same page don't be a martyr you know uh dismantle unhealthy constructs because they're just constructs you know um if it if it could be built we can tear it down um you know, uh, power hierarchies suck. Yeah, like, down with pi- power hierarchies. Like, we- cool. I think that those messages are in Yuki Yuna, and we're like, yeah, we agree with these things. But the more that they do to this series, <laughs> it's it's not as if they're filling in the gaps. Instead, it's like they're they're taking a jackhammer to the sidewalk and busting it up and then they're filling in where they just broke it you know like it 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 feels like the more that they add to Yuki Yuna they're damaging it in the process to the point where these really simple tenets that I think do exist in the series and maybe just aren't that well executed on end up becoming like, either, like, undone, or, like, sort of arbitrated, it, it, like, it loses some of the stuff that we've liked out of it. And we didn't even like all of it to begin with, to be honest, so... Right, yeah. I, I, think, the, I think the problem is, is that every time... Yuki Yuna was already basically a complete show when it first came out. Yeah. Right? You had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, you didn't solve everything, but you opened up the idea of there might be ways to solve this in the future. And then we got a bunch of added shit with the Washio Sumi chapter, which wasn't necessary. But it's not unnecessary. It sucked, but it didn't suck because the content. It sucked because of the way they presented the content. And the hero chapter at least kind of gave you some closure on the Taisha. Mm-hmm. But this was nothing, right? Like, like this was them looking at an IP they had, and instead of utilizing some legitimately interesting concepts they've created from the previous seasons, just decided to make new shit up. Yeah. Um, it's when you said it, it's you know not necessary but not unnecessary. I that that hits the nail on the head for me. It's it doesn't feel like this season was made to answer a why it feels more like why not we've got the ip either we like making it or it's popular um i'm not sure which maybe both i don't know if yuki yuna is even lucrative um i'm not sure if you have the data on that either but uh i mean it it has it has a fan base fair so so there is Yuki Yuna Bokeh of Brilliance did come out in October in June eighth, twenty seventeen, and it ca- and it ended on October twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, which is a gacha game for Yuki Yuna, which makes me think that they added characters to add more gacha characters to get in the game, yeah. which would make a little bit of sense, but they could have done that without all this nonsense. Um, I mean Yuki Yuna like this. This uh this show the the great Monkai, had like six thousand one hundred user reviews on it, which isn't like a ton, but compared to 
like now season dar see but like yeah no that's actually pretty bad because even like new season darling on dead girl murder farce has thirteen thousand views try what, what's a comparable show um check check some um, of the magia right now I, I do get Magia Record vibes sometimes. It's clearly not popular, but it's not unpopular. I don't know if it sells a lot in Japan. Uh, this is this is all based off of my anime list. Yeah, um, I can look up Blue... You know what? Highly US American oh, okay, sort of what we're talking about here. Let's look up Blu-ray sales. We're just going in at this point. We are going in on it, because I don't know why this show has so many episodes. <laughs> yeah. And the first volume was the eighth best-selling animation Blu-ray with four thousand seven hundred eighty-one copies, and it remained on the shit. Uh, the the, the really shit list. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it it stayed on for about. So it sold a total of about ten thousand copies. Um. Volume five charted at number one with six thousand four. So it sells. So it, it, the first season. Sold about 60,000 copies in total, which is pretty good for a Blu-ray sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first film ranked number one in the mini theater rankings of Japan. And the second film also ranked number one. So uh, it fucking sells in Japan. People in Japan like it. Um, we don't. <laughs> so let's let's talk about <laughs> the Great Monkai chapter. So Great Monkai chapter... Uh, first episode is basically more of the same. Antics. They're in a band. Antics, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, we get we get some club antics um that are, you know, traditional Yuki Yuna um where we see the girls being teenagers, which is actually something that I really like about this show. Um I think that it might be one of the better things about this show. I have a problem, not necessarily a problem. I don't like it when shows um, don't show their teenage heroes being teenagers. I don't like them when they're old, right? Where it's like, oh, they're 15, but they act like they're 26. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it when they're goofy. Yes, I remember this now. So, so yeah, it's basically just more slice of life, Yuki you know, which is something I did like in the first season. Yeah, it feels plucked right out of the beginning of season two. Yes. We get a look at the characters, and then they, they mention a Togo about Gein, right? And Togo remembers Gein, which he did in the second season, so it doesn't really add anything, because this is plopped right in the middle of season two essentially yeah chronologically that's where it's sitting at and so it it shows a flashback to how uh karin got picked to be um a hero and you meet a couple new characters uh mabuki and uh, yumiko and a bunch of other girls and it's like oh okay why are they doing a hero tryout they didn't do that in the first season Yuna and uh was just plucked, right? Fu was like, "Hey, do you want to be in the hero club to help people?" Just kidding. This is actually a secret uh club for superheroes. But apparently there's a tryout system now. And we don't really explain why. And that frustrated me because once again, it goes back into that that weird thing where in the first season everything was supposed to be like secretive, and then they decided that everybody knew about it. Um, but so Karin becomes the next hero, of course. We already know that, and uh, the other failed candidates are now recruited as sentinels, uh, and they're essentially scouts to look for places to go in the new world. Um, which is once again a decent idea but because it never was mentioned prior to this and since it's supposed to be going parallel with everything it makes no sense and and that's one of the other things i why i thought this was a sequel because i thought they were bringing the sentinels on to try and explore beyond the the barrier since the vertexes were killed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had the same exact thought. And I thought, okay, that makes sense. That's interesting. That that means something. You know, they need to go out and they start planting the saplings. So we think 
oh, that's interesting. They're trying to reclaim hell now that Shinju Sama's gone. And that is where I thought this was. Um, and so we we get this whole montage of these girls trying to do it. And it's weird because none of them die. Now, it's not that I want them to die. It's fine that they didn't. But you introduce these characters as basically fodder. And they're doing a great job. None of them are dying. They they are essentially clearing this with almost no casualties. The one time you think a character is about to die, they're actually fine. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes you'll hear like, oh no, people are getting attacked. But you never go face to face with those sentinels that might have died or you know face and grave injuries. And it's never mentioned. Yeah, yeah, it's never mentioned. And 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 instead, it's like, oh, the girls are quitting because it's too hard. Which is also weird because, like, why? If you're a religious cult trying to colonize hell, I feel like you shouldn't allow your child soldiers to quit. But hey, good on the Taisha for doing that. But it would have been more interesting if they weren't allowed to quit. I'm just saying. Um, But we, we... we get so the first two episodes are basically about the Sentinels, and I gotta be honest, almost none of them have a personality that's worth talking about. Mm-hmm. So the point where sometimes there's characters that I feel like act differently from one scene to another, um, and like I can, I I had to pause one of the episodes and like rewind because I thought that one character like like was was very much like muted in in one scene just kind of like nonchalant and then like the next part they're getting all hyped up and like aggressive sort of and it's like and if you're wondering why am i being vague about which character it is i don't know that character's name (laughs) i never i never memorized it um in fact the only sentinel that i i can recall the name of off the top of my head is mebuki uh and well i guess aya kind of counts in that group although she's not a sentinel yeah but like she's not a sentinel she's a I don't know the other girls' names. I know there's the one that has the the one I was thinking of is the one that looks like she has cat ears in her hair. Um, like her her personality seems kind of here and there. You're you're thinking of you're thinking of uh Shizuku Yamabushi. Yeah. Um, I'll take your word for who it. Who has zero who has zero favorites on my anime list, and it says no biography is right. Yeah. Um. Then there's uh, the girl who freaks out a lot. She's Suzu May. Yeah. Um. Also, also zero favorites on my anime list. No biography. Which is really right. sad because that character is designed entirely to be a gag. Um. So yeah. she's getting no love for that. Um. But but that's that's another one of those problems that comes out of this entire show is that these girls are supposed to be facing these incredibly dangerous odds and are supposed to be at risk of dying and she's just going i don't want to die and it's a gag Mm -hmm. right like it's a gag which means you can't kill her because then the gag is no longer funny it's just sad yeah and poorly executed too exactly exactly and so you get to see these these sentinels and you're not really connecting with them. They're a little boring, but you're like, oh, they're planting these plants to recover hell, which is an interesting idea. And then it turns out that that's not working. So instead, they're just going to sacrifice Aya, who is like a priestess girl. She's kind of like a um, a cleric. She provides support um, and keeps everybody alive. And so the they have to go back and retrieve all the saplings because it just didn't work. And instead, they're just like, oh, we're going to sacrifice this girl. But you just took the interesting part of the show, got rid of it, changed it. And now I started to realize at this point that this isn't a sequel. This is, there's something else. Yeah. Um, uh, and so finally, a, a vertex comes, not a, not a starlight, a vertex, which is like, wait a second. I thought they were all killed. Mm. Uh, and... Yumiko gets injured, but she doesn't die. She gets, like, bandaged up. Um, Mabuki does fight everyone and saves everybody. And... uh, 
fucking hold on. I'm reading this Wikipedia thing to keep everything on there. This is I I want to stress to everybody. This is the most I've said what the fuck in like a long time like in this series. Um we're actively trying to read along as we go because it's going to save us more editing time later. <laughs> We'd rather be frank yes, with yes, you yes, about yes, that. Yes. Like this is where we're at. Um and we're and it, the chronology is going to get even more fucked from here, so hang tight. Yes. So so this is the episode where we figure out why Togo uh got uh her got erased from everyone's memory, right? Because Ty- the Taisha erased her from memory to take on everybody's sins so that the Sentinels didn't need to sacrifice anybody. And then Gein says, hey, you're not supposed to die yet. And then she awakens with Yuna saving her in the part at the end of the, at the beginning of the the, the hero chapter. Yes. Um... Because she, because they save her, and then Yuna takes on all the sins. So once again, we get the same exact thing. We figure out like one piece of the puzzle that wasn't kind of mentioned in the hero chapter, but it was something that we could already assume was mentioned. Yeah, right. Like the, it was something that we uh, we could we could pick from the the context clues. Um, and so, hooray! We're in we're in sequel territory, or not sequel territory. We're we're near the sequel part where we've what we've already seen. So it goes into this wild moment where all the girls are having a Christmas party and we get to see some more Yuki Yuna antics and you find out that in the year 2018 which is when everything went to hell literally uh, there's five yes there was five girls who were um Chikage Kori, Anyo Iojima, uh Takame Doi uh, Yuna Takashima, who is Yuna's uh, ancestor, and Wakabe Nogi, who I believe is Sonako's ancestor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's like, we're going to tell you the story of the first hero chapter. And then they immediately kill off two of them. <laughs> like, like right off the bat, uh, Chikagi and Anzu die, I believe. No, not Chikagi. Um, uh, it would have been Tamako, I think. Oh, okay. I know that because I don't remember Tomoko's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they died so uh, quick I didn't get di- to know them. Which, I mean, granted, yes. better than the Sentinels, who we got to see for much longer, and I didn't learn any of this. So. <laughs> yeah, so so we get, like, immediately um, people die. And then Chikage gets, like, she gets pushed over the edge which is what it says here on wikipedia um and she starts attacking people but but it's it's stupid because we we don't see these characters interact before they kill any of them off so i know i was just talking about how they didn't kill off any of the sentinels which is a wasted opportunity to have some sort of drama but by the time they kill off these people we don't even know who they are yeah we we have like they the are semblance inter- that okay they sit together and they die together so they probably were like partners and then that's all you can basically assume like they they maybe have like a couple moments where they like will talk a little bit when they're hanging out or whatever but like that's it's not enough to go on (laughs) it's yeah it's it's nothing if they wanted us to feel bad when they died i couldn't like i i i wanted to like i was like dang like they they're probably gay i wish i felt bad about this but (laughs) shit well i guess they're gone now and no, they don't flash back to develop them later either. No. Uh, and so Chikage gets mad and she becomes the typical Yandere. I'm going to kill you so I can be with my girlfriend, uh, Takashima Yuna. Uh, and so she starts trying to kill uh, Wakaba uh, so that she can be Yuna's girlfriend. And they they do this whole thing where they, they fight a Vertex... And uh, they, it, they do that stupid thing where it's like, hey, you tried to kill me, but today we're partners. You're not alone. And then she immediately tries to kill uh, Wakaba again. Like, during that fight, she's like, now that we've killed the Vertex, I'm going to kill you. And then Chikage dies protecting Wakaba from a Stardust, like the, the weaklings. It's super weird. 
classic Yuki unit in fighting. Yeah, yeah. And so the Taisha refused to acknowledge like that Chikaba was ever a hero because religious bad, maybe? Um, and they they find that, oh, she was depressed and had a bad home life. And Wakaba decides to tell everybody that Shikage was a true hero because she died and she doesn't follow the Taisha's uh, things. And then the Taisha are like, all right, we're cool with that. She's going to be a hero. And it's like, then what was the point of it, right? If this was a big secret that there was a fourth hero or a fifth hero, right? It maybe if you had like talked about these characters in the original series and then you introduced Chikage and you found out that she was being suppressed by the Taisha that would have been an interesting twist but instead it's just like here's the basis of a twist we're not going to actually do it but wouldn't it be cool um and so we we move on and Wakaba and Takashima fight the last vertex for the first time in 2018 um and they use these stupid power suits apparently rant about these stupid fucking power suits I, they're first of all it has the yuki yuna issue of like it's it's not really retconning but it is just like just slam it in there and it doesn't have to make sense for the future right like they won't care <laughs> Or they would, it's yeah. fine. Nothing yeah. ever has to be the same. There's no such thing as lineage <laughs> in a way. Um, like, it's okay. Don't think about how many generations of, uh, of Yuna will, will happen. Takashima will look exactly like Yuki. And that's just. 100%. 100%. That's just it, right? It's okay. Don't worry about it at all. Um, but these suits that they have, like they've, it's in a way it seems like it's a it's a step forward and a step back for like with any of the stuff that comes after it. These these are as far as we can tell, like the first iteration of these girls getting powers right for the hero club. Um, they're on batteries. So it's like, okay, we've seen this kind of thing, you know, it's Gundam, it's Ava, it's, uh, you have a certain time limit, you must defeat the monsters by then, right? The timer, to show how, how much energy they have, it's located on the torso, which means that if you wanted to look down and see how much time you have remaining, you, you would have to look at it upside down. <laughs> And depending on how it's built into the armor, you might not even be able to see it at that angle. Um, the reason why it's there, obviously, is for the audience. But it's it flies in the face of diegetic narrative developments that, like, they would just not at all make that practical. If it's supposed to, if they're not supposed to look at it, why give it a number, right? Like the in all the other Yukiuna stuff, they had the flower metaphor going. That was great, right? Like, I can't believe I said that, but like, okay, like you're, you know, like you're the when when they're expending their powers, right? The flower would wilt. Um, it was a- extremely easy to understand what was that about, right? And it's not even a typical power meter, but it's um, it comes from nature, right? It's intuitive that way. Meanwhile they just no like they could have just reused that right and now the flowers on a timer instead of being how much energy they, they expend but no 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 this is this is more archaic so maybe we have a limited amount of power despite the fact that i don't think anyone's engineering these suits cuz they just transform into them right but don't worry about that just fucking don't worry about it um but yeah you have a timer and it's in a place you can't see the one thing that he is yeah fucking hilarious about that is that it does explain why these characters so frequently run out of time at the worst moment (laughs) because they can't see their fucking numbers and guess what guess who can see their numbers the other characters so they're like no don't do it because they can see that you're on fucking five four three two one um and meanwhile they're charging in because they can't keep time and like what a fucking 
roundabout way to to make a plot like tension point <laughs> but anyways um second thing that these iteration of hero club powers have like personas <laughs> divine personas hey, shuten joji is here all right cool you, uh you call uh, you know here's here's takashima like she's gonna scream and get the power of god and then she's gonna do a uh, attacks i don't know I don't know what the fuck is it's there for, but it introduces an entire middle tier of deities that exist that don't get talked about. Like, Shinju-sama, as far as we can tell, is like, you know, for most of the series, is kind of like, like a monotheistic god, which is not really like, you know, that that's not how Shintoism works. It's, it's weird, right? It's one of the interesting things about Yuki Yuna is here's just this one god that we pray to. You know, odd, right? It's That is genuinely, like, a point of intrigue. Cool. But, no, let's throw some other deities in there. Who even knows if they're deities? Maybe they're just, like, names of superpowers that have, like, dude visuals attached to them. Fuck if I know. But we'll never get an answer. <laughs> Because they show up, they power them up, and then it's, that's it. The The deities don't talk to them. They, they're they practically as like inanimate as the familiar, actually more so than their fairy familiars in later areas. Are the fairy familiars like an evolution of that? I don't fucking know. But, whoa, personas. I think it's honestly kind of a downgrade that the heroes later don't get anything like that. Like, I know that there's, like, uh, like I think some bit of dialogue that's like, oh, like, the there were gods that were consumed by Shinju-sama, or something like that. That's maybe the best hint that we have that this is why they don't have those powers anymore. But is that just to assume that the girls got weaker, and that, or, like, the powers got weaker, but the girls then got stronger anyways, and still managed to defeat Shinju-sama that way? Right? Like, oh, it's so fucking much. Um... <sighs> so Takashina Yuna uh, was like, "Hey, uh, we 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 did the thing. Takashima and Wakaba kill the final vertex. At least that they know of. <laughs> and then I think Takashina dies, which is weird because she's like Yuki Yuna's direct ancestor. So it's okay. Her her spirit lives on in Shinju-sama and then visits her later." Yeah, and she's like, hey, Yuki, I know you have the curse of mankind's sins. Do you uh, do you want me to take it because I'm a dead ghost? And Yuki Yuna's like, no, nah, I'll, I'll handle this. And then we get a montage of her being depressed in the from the hero chapter, which is one of the most uh, painfully good things this show has ever done. Um, but it felt really silly doing a montage of it. Yeah. Also, I because it's it's like, do you remember when we actually were able to make you feel sad about someone's emotional state? Yeah, sorry, we can't do that now for some reason. I think it's worth mentioning too that we we once again have like the the problems with Yuki Yuna's soft magic system, which normally I don't have an issue with. Some of my favorite stories don't develop their rules right, and I just that oftentimes for me works really well. Like, it's like, I don't care about the technicalities. You don't have to make a science out of this. However, it is weird that Takashima, if I remember correctly, shows up and is just like, hey, I can take that for you. And as best we can tell, there's no stakes in that. She's just a kind of a force ghost at this point. So, like, I don't see the why not there. But Yuna's like, no, no, I think I should uh, continue suffering with this. Thanks, though. Yeah. Like, I don't want. I don't want you to feel bad. I need to feel bad. Go, go back and live in the ether somewhere. Go, stop being a character. <laughs> this isn't your season anymore. Um, um, fuck. Yeah, and so we 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 lose. Uh, we lose out on the old heroes. Um, and we we move back to the present, which is actually the past from where we left off in the the series. Can you chart us the timeline so far in like how we've gone forward and backward? Yes. Yeah, so we have gone backwards initially, 
to to start at basically season two yeah. again, right? We 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 go backwards to the end of season one, pre season three. I mean, pre we go back to okay. Let me talk about it in chapters. We go past Yuki Yuna as a hero before the uh the hero chapter. Um, then we go backwards two years before Yuki Yuna is a hero to learn about Karin's um how she became a hero and everyone that surrounded her, and then. We go back forward in time to the the Yuki Yuna as a hero, the hero chapter. No, no, we're before the hero chapter still to learn about the Sentinels. And then we go back to the beginning of the hero chapter. And then immediately the next episode, we go back to 2018 to learn about the first heroes. And then we go forward back to learn about the end of the hero chapter. So now we're at the end of the hero chapter. I, I didn't realize until we entered this series how much I should have appreciated the split format that they took with season two. Because holy fuck. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, we are not the kind of people that would, you know, would poo-poo a, a, a non-linear story. But this this series had me feeling like I miss sepia filters. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, okay, so like, like, give them back. I'll take it. I'll take so, anything. <laughs> so, like, I, I mentioned this a lot when we talk about nonlinear stories and and Concrete Revolution. Now, um, it constantly fluctuates between, um, like a four year time skip, back four years, and then four years into the present, um. And it doesn't, it tells you right off the bat when it is. It says the year. But what's neat is that all of the characters are the same characters. And because of that, you have uh, the, you are able to tell, oh, this is at this point because this guy's arm's fucked up. You don't know why his arm is fucked up, but you know it's fucked up, which means it's the future. Um, or at least the present. Yeah, there's anchor points Since for you information. Can- Yes, and so it's like because we don't have the same characters and we don't have anchor point information and because it doesn't know how to really talk about that kind of... It just keeps going back and forth. And so it becomes really hard for you to be like, all right, where does this take place in the greater timeline? Once you realize that it is not a sequel, it's a lot easier to follow. But before you realize it's not a sequel, it's really, really confusing. Yeah. Um, um, also, just let's mix in there that their ancestors look so much like them. <laughs> oh, just yeah. Yuki Yuna's of ancestor is... Confusion. And I, I yeah, don't Yuna get just... the impression that they're like... That they wanted that to be, like, a problem, right? Like, I don't think they meant to make a mystery out of who those characters were, because it's not like we ever saw them before um, Sonochi brings out the diary, right? Like, we... So it's like, there's... Practically, there is no mystery, right? We understand that it's not Yuki Yuna that we're looking at. But it means that whenever we jump back and forth later, you have to, like, be constantly agonizing over, like, okay, what's her hairpiece look like? (laughs) Like... I need to look at her hairpin. Okay, now I know where we're at. It's also wild because, like, even if you suspend your disbelief, it's like three hundred years in the past. <laughs> like, genetics aren't that strong. <laughs> um, they are when force uh, ghosts are involved. That's true. That's true. And so, so we 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 get back to the uh, the part where the um the sentinels and the heroes are trying to figure out the final the final uh, fight, and like Karin fights mabuki and it sucks because we don't give a shit about mabuki and karin's relationship they barely interacted it mostly just a typical rivalry (laughs) it's nothing to write home about yeah yeah maybe if they were girlfriends um the sentinels are tasked with making and protecting a giant cannon uh which will help yuna and the heroes Yay. Um, they call themselves mooks at this point, <laughs> which I think is funny. 
we go back to the finale of the hero chapter where the heroes are trying to save Yuna from marrying the god. Uh, we, and then uh, the Sentinels try and protect Aya uh, and the Taisha so they can charge their special beam cannon. And uh-oh, things go sour and all the Taisha start turning into dust um, and become one with God. Well, and some of them are um, just disappearing. There's like a discrepancy where like some of them are losing faith and they're just poofing. Like, like not even, we're not poofing. I should be very clear. They're just disappearing. Where it's just like one frame to the next, they just click out of existence. That's different than getting dusted. Because um, the ones that turn to dust, I think, are like, they're they're opting to become one with Shinju-sama, if I understood correctly. Um, it's not very clear. So there's there's evidently multiple ways to die and move on. And I, I once again, am like, then what does that mean for afterlife, right? Like, what does it mean to live with, in, in, of Shinju-sama versus, like, just getting zapped out of existence? Is it, like, if, if that happens, is there an afterlife? Do you, do you now belong in the hell that is around you? Or is there a different hell? Or is there nothingness? And the difference would be that living with Shinju-sama is, like, some form of, like, bodiless united consciousness like if if people were going to give up anyways would they have had the power to well i guess they wouldn't say she she's usama because they're not like they don't have the girl power that the other characters have but it's it, it's like raises a lot of questions <laughs> um are they important questions i don't know i think they kind of are but maybe i'm asking too much <laughs> Yeah, so so they go and save Yuna. Um, the cannon shoots, uh, and and they find out that Mabuki finds out that Aya is going to make all humanity one with Shinju by turning everybody into dust. Uh, pretty uh, even Gellian like if you ask. Wait, me. I thought the cannon failed. Uh, the cannon did fail, but they fixed oh. it. I entirely forgot that. I'll edit that. Um, out. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, you don't need to edit it out. Show how stupid you are. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Fu finds a way to get to to Yuna, and so Togo goes to Yuna, and they they call upon all the past heroes to fight the gods, and uh, they do, and then Shinju sacrifices itself. So that everyone in the world returns to normal, which opens up the question as if this god actually gave a shit. Why didn't it do that in the first place? Yeah, also, um, what, what was hell made of that it couldn't be erased this way? Like, did, it, it, It's very silly. Um, did, it, and then, the, well, it's like, that could be interesting, Can of Worms. It's like, was, was that actually Shinju-sama's creation and a form of, like, extending it's like life force was to like well i'll trap everyone in a bubble here and i'll basically leech off of human life until there's nothing left um and the hell bubble is a way to like sort of like the sims style keep everyone from getting away um that could be interesting i don't think that's it (laughs) I, i don't think there's any hint of that uh i'd probably be reaching to assume that's what the case is but I'm trying. I'm yes. trying to make something likable out of Yuki Yuna. It, I'm really trying. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it could have been cool, but they just decide to overlap it. Now we are beyond what we've ever seen in the very last episode. So it takes the entire show to get to the the fallout of what happened in the show, uh, and so everyone is going back to normal life. Uh, they talk about. Um, like what they should do going forward and uh sonico is like hey the hoe that i had it is a symbol that it's the hero's duty to help restore the world as it should be and we should kill the taisho because they are terrible and i like based but they play it off as a joke and they're like hey how about instead of killing the taisha you become the leader of the taisha uh, so that you can lead them to the right path, even though they they're not necessary anymore. Their god is dead. Who gives a shit? A lot of people are losing faith in them as we speak. But but no, let's let's like let's reform this. That's a great idea. Yeah, 
it, it's it's a stupid it's stupid um and so yuna and toga venture into the world to see if that anyone survived being trapped in a hell bubble for 300 or so years um fu was a scientist which is kind of stupid uh because she never really showed that she was a scientist I, before I, I have a feeling that like i think maybe she did have an interest in science but like long ago, like isn't she studying a lot in season one? Maybe, but God, yeah, but it's maybe. it's like it's not a it's not a major part of her character. Which like, yeah. On one hand, it's like I wouldn't want it to be like a one note thing, like. But we never forgot that Itsuki was like a singer. You know, like she wanted to to be a musician. Like yes. Because that was like a that was far more prominent and core to who she was, right? So it's like I feel like it it threw me off too, right? Like not enough that I bothered to go look up what happened before, but that's what you get with us. Yuki Yuna doesn't doesn't compel us to to do that much homework. Yeah, and so the show ends um, with a much more interesting concept for a sequel than we'll ever get. Because I assure you, if there's going to be more Yuki Yuna, uh, which there might be, let me look it up. Uh, Yuki Yuna is a hero season four. Um, no, there's no confirmation yet. Um, but we got we got nothing. This season was totally unnecessary, <laughs> except for the pro the epilogue. <laughs> like everything else about it was just sucked. It just sucked. Yeah. I felt like I once I figured out it wasn't a sequel. I honestly felt like I was wasting my time. Mm-hmm. Well, and I can I can hopefully shed some light on why that is. This season, and, and especially its new characters, are so static. Um, practically all of the events that we see before and after these characters are introduced, and like in their own like timelines of personal lives. Nothing has an effect on who they are. I want to give, say, Mebuki as an example. We know that Mebuki is a hothead and someone who strives to greatness, right? Like, that's what we get first impression when she's, you know, attempting to become a hero. Um, We get to see that she aspires to follow in the footsteps of her father, right? Okay, so that set the trajectory. We don't ever know what it's like for Mebuki to not be like that, though. She just, as far as we know, always took after her father. Then, she doesn't get to become a hero, and continues to be that same hot-headedness. Then, she has to lead her own team, learn to work with people, and she still acts the same way. Um, eventually, she has to come around to a point where she is exuding more strength than Karin, and she has to give Karin a talking to, and in the process, is just as callous as she's always been, and functionally behaves the same way. So it's like, why did we spend time giving this character so much screen time and and scenarios if fundamentally she's just always the same person all the time? Um, take Aya, right? Aya is, up until like the end, when she has a wavering moment of faith, She's always the same character. She is like the the gentle, innocent priestess type. Um, she's a maiden, and that's it. When she's on screen, you can just tune out because she's going to say exactly the things that you think she's going to say. She's nothing more than a trope. Um, and meeting Mebuki doesn't change that, right? Like you, they have moments where they're trying to demonstrate like oh look Mebuki has a an interest in like military vehicles and and like model kits okay so that's like a little side grade to Mebuki's character i guess it's technically something it doesn't make her a different person but now we just know a little bit more about her but does it change aya at all or her impression of Mebuki not really cuz she always just had full faith in who Mebuki was and just liked her, right? Like, that's why they went to the store in the first place. Because they just were hanging out. Because they liked to do that. This, r- rinse and repeat for all of these characters that we have, right? Chikage is a perfect example. Where she does go through an increasingly worse spiral of a, you know, uh, 
what what seems to be sort of a, a kind of persecution complex um you know a great deal of anxiety and depression um and this like feeling of isolation right like she's very mentally unwell and highly stressed out um in a way that ideally would provoke you to empathize with her um and then you get to see what her you know her background is and that she she has a troubled home okay now i know more about her but that's just the founding part of who chikage has always been right like someone who's closed off that kind of avoids people um because she's sensitive to the extreme circumstances she's living in takashima starts to warm up to her and that's a little bit of something right you know she kind of opens up in return but almost immediately when wakaba steps in and starts to befriend her as well everything's out the window and chikage just intensifies as the character she already was um it's like why are they spending time on these characters if they're not going to show us trajectory right um it's very flat you know and i'll admit chikage is you know probably the closest that we get to these characters changing but take takashima take wakaba uh, aside from like occasionally breaking out into like emotional frustration they're the same people all the way through you know wakaba is noble takashima is cheerful um sometimes they break but then they bounce right back and when you see them later it's not like the you know at least in say takashima's case when she comes back as a spirit to speak with yuki it's not as if the like she comes with advanced wisdom from what she's lived through she doesn't talk about chikage she doesn't talk about wakaba she just says hi it's me your ancestor want me to help yeah it's as if it meant nothing it's a net zero effect um you know i was watching another show in kind of in parallel with this one um i was going through c the money of soul and possibility control or there's like multiple names right i think it might also be the money and soul of possibility or something um anyways um i was watching that and that show also loves to do flashbacks it's the without getting too far into it the concept of the show is that people bet their future on financial battles in sort of like a a virtual world um and so if you lose then you lose your future that you bet you know like so if you if you get into a shonen fight and then you lose it then when you come back to reality things are different now right oh, there goes gravity <laughs> sorry uh and so um you know like it's like reality changes you know it updates and something that was there is not there anymore it's gone because you bet that and lost it um you when you get to see say flashbacks of certain characters or these like flash forwards in a way you know where we come back to reality the characters change and that's kind of the whole point is like you know hey let's let's get a flashback to when this person wouldn't have any interest in this death game and why they have interest in the death game there's something they want to gain from it there's someone they want to save and so they get involved um then we see who they are now which is usually someone who's more confident more assured and then we see after they've lost something that they're now regretting it and they're reflecting on why they started this in the first place and perhaps what either character flaws or life circumstances pinned them into that situation you get reflection you get change there's dynamism right like <laughs> the the character has more than one dimension to them as a result you don't really get that in yuki yuna very often um it's why i think we valued the you know the lengthy amount of time they spent in season two with yuna just having this worsening depression is that it's not what yuki is about you know it's you know she is like um a, a very optimistic kind of person someone who's cheerful someone who will go out of her way to make her friends you know have a good time and 
she's struggling to compartmentalize the depression that she's feeling because it's so not her and she knows it's not her. You don't really get that with these characters. Like, to go back to Chikage, Chikage does not become a different person. She just worsens. Um, and it's not to say that I don't feel bad for her. My God, like, they, they give her some bad situations to deal with, right? And it's like, yeah, like, congrats. I feel uncomfortable when, you know, they depict her rough home life and her abusive, you know, relationship with her father. Like, sure, you can you can deal those emotional crits, but I I don't get the sense that Yuki Yuna actually has an idea of how to make change happen. Yeah, Yuki Yuna does not have praxis, right? At best, it might theorize some things, but when it comes down to it, the way that real change happens is that Yuki punches something. Right. <sighs> And I think that's that's why this feels like such a waste of a series. Uh, I should say a waste of a season, right? These 12 episodes. Yeah, it has something there. There's something there that you're like trying to it, it, it's it's you want you want to you want it. You want to find something about it. And as you continue to go into it, it just becomes worse. Um, and worse, and, uh, who wrote Yuki Yuna? Well, we know who wrote. Yeah, it was written by Takashiro, and, uh, he was the guy that did Akame Ga Kill, and Makoto Uiza, who has done, uh, a lot, uh, but he's mostly a script guy. He's not necessarily, like, the creator but he uh he wrote the series composition and script for Danganronpa, uh the animation and also Kanasuba, and also Kanasuba two, and also uh Yuki Yuna is a hero, and Kanasuba three, I don't know it's just yeah I I it's not good, it's not a good show and I understand why people would like it. I think the pro- I think the, the 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 realization that you are watching something and there's something there that you like and you can it, I never got it. Someone might else have got it. I never got to it. Uh, the closest I got is when Togo was in a wheelchair and she turned into a magical girl and she used her ribbons to snipe someone. That was dope as hell. <laughs> and I wish they kept that. Yeah. I wish I wish they kept I wish they kept that that version. Mm-hmm. Honestly, so much of Yuki Yuna is less is more. It really is. Yep. Um, damn that that should just be the whole review right there. Um, I I do have some reflections I think on the the larger series. Now that we're done with this, if you don't mind me kind of running through some of those thoughts, I do mind. <laughs> okay. Well, I do. I I also want you to weigh in in case any this this spurs any thoughts from you. Um. Uh, first of all, um, it really makes sense why they have infighting so frequently in this series. Now that we've gotten to what seems to be the end of the end of it, and the monsters never had a consciousness or like any kind of visible like intention or willpower other than just like attack target. Um, so it's like okay, if we can't stir drama with the antagonists then we just have to make the characters that do have minds and voices and hearts fight each other. Um, which I think is kind of lame. Um, they really wrote themselves into a corner with that. Um, and like, I, I can get the appeal of having a, an enemy you can't reason with, but it sure runs out of steam when over and over again, the takeaway is we need to work together. We need to value our mental health and, because we already solved that with the main characters, we have to now backpedal and fuck that up again with these other generations of characters. Um, it's like, I we get it. We we shouldn't do the martyrdom thing, but here's Gein doing the martyrdom thing because Gein had to die before these characters didn't do it. You know, it's like the, the, the forward-moving progressive ideas that Yuki Yuna has don't get to be the ending note because they did more shit. <laughs> and so now you end on a much less satisfying note 
that feels like it's backpedaled. Um, and speaking of which, there's other ways they backpedaled. Uh, for example, um, the pull yourself up by your bootstrap speech from Mebuki to Karin um, is kind of like out of place in this series. Karin's having an awful time, uh, and Mebuki, after having learned to work with her team and to to protect them with her life and uh, understanding what happens when um, you know they they step out in front and you know the the wounds they may bear, she just attacks Karin uh, because she thinks then that's going to get Karin back in fighting shape. Right. And uh, and being brave and pushing through your feelings is more important than actually working out what the heck they are. Um, which is, again, super weird. <laughs> super weird for that to happen. Um, now to hop on over to Karin. This, this girl's gay. <laughs> In more than one way. Because um, now it seems like she's got a crush on Yuki along with Fu from before. So, yeah, she, double heartbreak. Like, I'm not I'm not mistaking that, right? Like, she did have a confession to Yuki before where she was like, I like Fu. I'm terrified of second guessing myself. Kind, kind of. Like, it's not, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty like oh, she's so cool and inspires me so much, you know? Like, it's the, it's the, the it's the, hey, we're gonna do some gay shit without doing some gay shit speech, Yeah, and that right? didn't amount to anything. It, so this is round two, of course, where, where it could have amounted to something. Well, no, actually, it couldn't have, because we've already seen the end of season two when we've gotten to this season. So, Jesus. Um, but, okay, Karin now has a... Has a, a seemingly a crush on Yuki as well because she's staring at pictures of her on her phone and and lamenting the fact that she can't help her and is like and and this is the only character we're seeing go through that like we don't see this with Pu we don't see it with Itsuki we don't see it with even Togo right because Togo did enough of that in season two um so yeah it, Karin's just like going through it um and like attempting to rehearse like. Uh, like apology speeches and stuff, right? Like, oh, and she gets nothing. They, she, she goes to the void and screams about it, and then she gets, she fights Mebuki over it, and then we just kind of resume back where we were. Um, my conclusion on this point is that Karin needs to meet girls outside of work. I think she deserves it at this yeah. point. Um. Well, now she lives on a boat, so... Yeah. Fishing is life. <laughs> Fishing is life. Um, there's still... Tonal issues are still a problem here. Um, we mentioned before, like, there's an entire character that's just meant to break pace by freaking out at inappropriate times. Um, uh, there's a part where, where like... Uh, sandwiched in between two very like dramatic moments is everyone getting flustered over yuki getting uh engaged to shinju sama um so it's like can we not do that <laughs> like come on <laughs> um it feels like only a laugh track could make some of these worse it's it's as if they they think like we can't handle a, an entire sad series despite the fact that like they decided, hey, let's let's go back to season two and add new things to it um, when things were as dramatic as they could be, you know? Um, and also mm -hmm. we'll add two new sets of characters that also have dramatic underpinnings to them. And instead of being just like, okay, this is just going to be the serious season, they're like, no, no, jingle the keys in front of the audience, make sure they're paying attention. Hey, 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 if this is funny, are you paying attention? Did you like that? It's funny that they the they made jokes with each other. Oh, she's all flustered. Oh, it's like great. You all like antics. Okay. You did it. You did all it. Alright, let's let's get back to the infighting again. Um I, okay. One thing I can give them credit on is that we got this far in the review and didn't have to mention inappropriate sexualization of the characters. 
Yeah, they they did. They didn't. <laughs> the opening has a bit of a little bit of that where they're like they're kind of like magic naked and like they're all kind of like splayed out and twitching a little bit. It's like okay, but in the actual show content, um, like the worst it gets is that we see someone in a robe that gets wet and so it's kind of clinging to their skin and it's like it's not even as bad as when it happened in season two which was bad so okay that's that's genuinely i guess a positive over the previous seasons is that we didn't have to deal with that (laughs) yes Um, to immediately discredit that again um they didn't have any transformation scenes uh in this uh, season. Which, which is bad. When, when also um, it, it negates the possibility where they could have sexualized them those because that's where that happened in previous seasons. You know, true, um, true. So they true. just side and it was them. almost entirely Togo. Yep. But um, but yeah, but at the same time, if you're gonna do a magical girl show, you don't have a it, like, and you don't have a and you don't have a, 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 a transformation sequence. I'm immediately gonna get pissed at you. Yeah. Um. Okay, I have uh, some final nitpicks, and then we can. Can I can yes. I make a nitpick about the show as Give a whole? It. The fight scenes suck. <laughs> now I know that I know that fight scenes are you know they're not always the make or break of a show, but the fact that you're basically fighting blobs of gelatin, like like let's let's look at Symphogear for for a reference here, right? Symphogear fights blobs of gelatin all the time, but they make all the movements super dynamic and super in- interesting. And then when they do the major fights, they're against people, so they can have a little bit more dynamic movements to their fights. Yeah. In Yuki Yuna, you fight a basically formless being, and it doesn't fight back. It might shoot lasers or spew poison gas and then ignite the poison gas. Uh, it's it's all this stuff, but the characters don't really need to do any dynamic moving, and they don't. They just kind of hang out there. It's kind of yeah. It's like um, it's kind of glide in at enemies. Um, what does it remind me of? Uh, it reminds me of. Okay, maybe this is a weird poll. It reminds me of Dissidia, Final Fantasy. Yeah! Where like, you kind of like lock the onto someone, game? you just kind of like zoom directly at them, and then you'll like have an aerial fight. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Okay, um, but yeah, okay, well, okay, here's this. We mentioned that infighting happens a lot in the series. When they do attack each other, such as like... You know, Chikage fighting Wakaba and um, Mebuki fighting Karin. What do you think of those? They're fine, but they last like a minute at most, mm-hmm. right? But they're they're the time it 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 matters, right? It's like, oh, cool, we get to see some dynamics, but the the Karin versus the, what's her fucking name again? Mebuki. What's her name? Mebuki, yeah, the car- it's just them like hitting them twice and then putting them into submission and then doing it again. It's just like whatever, who gives mm-hmm. a shit. There, um, there was one really good spin kick that Takashima did <laughs> when they were sparring. Um, that was fun. She went for a fucking yeah. Was it when she was for the fucking head blow? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Props to that. That was fine. <laughs> um, I'll also say that when Chikage started attacking pedestrians, that was a, 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 one extremely edgy, uh, but two, um, supremely effective at fucking me up. <laughs> like they, they, if there's like a an emotional high point. Where if if someone was taking like a galvanic skin response from me during this series, that would have peaked the chart. <laughs> so it's something. That, it but was the thing off, is, I mean, is that it worked. It, yeah, it worked. Um, it worked. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have any other nitpicks um, you would like to share? Get them out your system. Uh, I uh I don't like. 
I don't like the the magic system. Uh, I think it's stupid that they can't stick to one thing. Yeah. They don't develop any of the things they do in a way that's cool. So, like, you don't see them develop the fairies. You don't see them develop the mankai. You don't see them develop uh, the stands. They just are like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? And then they don't do it. Yeah. It feels l- largely lacking in depth. Perhaps also due to the choreography problem. Like, why why bother doing any cool logistics with how this works if fundamentally what fights break down to is someone manifesting a larger and larger weapon to swing? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You know, like, yes. If there's, I and I love, I love manifesting big weapons. I really do. I I think it can be really cool, uh. But it can't just be. Hey, here we go, big weapon. It's kind of a limit break mentality okay. that they have. Yeah, you you gotta you gotta you gotta build up to the big weapon. It's gotta be big. Um, be interesting. And it just never. It's gotta be interesting. The show's not. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't like that they just kind of dropped the main cast in this series, this season, because, honestly, the most interesting thing about the show is the way they interact with each other, and they sort of just... Aren't there. <laughs> yeah, they're not there, and so you get a bunch of other characters you don't give a shit mm-hmm. about. And characters that we've, we've and been... I hate give an exclusive right to not care about because we already saw how right. this ends. Yeah, it, it's just, it, it's it's really bad. How, how many um, of the Sentinels survived the final event? Who knows? Who cares? We don't even see them again once they they go to give the good old bravery punch to Shinji-sama. Like, it's... Yeah, that's you, yeah. We don't. You don't ever know don't what happened to them, a, and then the the epilogue happens, and you don't see them in the epilogue either. Not one of them. Yes. Yeah, it, it's like yeah, you don't. It sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry if you liked Mebuki or Suzume or any of the other girls. Uh, maybe you get to see Aya. I think I don't remember or no. Am I thinking of? Am I getting her stuff confused with Sonoko? thought sorry i think you might see uh, i think you might see aya and mebuki like hanging out for a second yeah but aside from that like they get almost nothing in that especially most notably in the four-year time skip forward yes uh and that sucks that confirms they really did not care um they might have forgotten about or or just in the runtime they had we're just like no it's it it matters more that we just squeeze this in and we don't bother with the others Yep, they're like, whatever, and then it just is like, it's who cares? It's, it's who cares? It's a fucking who who, who cares? You want to talk about something we care about? I, yeah. What's up with Yuki's heterochromia? Oh, fuck, yeah, okay, so at the end, Yuna merges with the other Yuna, from the past, and she gets heterochromia, and Brantley and I were like, oh, did she get the other eye from her past, like, her her ancestor? And the answer is no. (laughs) They didn't. (laughs) What the fuck? I don't know where the green eye came from. They had it. Like, they had it right there, right? They had it. They had an excuse to do it, and they didn't do it oh fuck now i'm wondering did that form exist in season two no okay i didn't think so no um what a mess oh yeah (laughs) i maybe maybe there's a reason for the green eye but you heard it from us we're stupid (laughs) yeah there's not it sucks it's dumb um if if there was don't tell us (laughs) Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Head down to the comments and close the tab. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah. I additionally in the epilogue, I was disappointed that there's really no progress on relationships. Uh, like, I mean, Yuki and Togo do go traveling with each other, 
so you could imply that oh they like each other enough to do that and there's the whole like i'd go anywhere with you um which okay you know like i will buy that definitely i'd buy them being partners since season one but like it's it's no more than we already kind of had in previous seasons and so if it's like you had a whole another season to develop this you'd think maybe the the main two characters Look, could have gotten if like, we if something. we are going to wait for a, a kiss and something it's gonna it's not gonna be in anything like this right it's just hold hands just fucking do just, something uh but yeah. it didn't it's so easy it's it writes itself right like they they yuki yuna is full of so many setups and practically no spikes they just kind of like most of the time they get it over the net sometimes they don't but most of the time they do but you never get like the the spike with it right it doesn't ever feel like they set it up with the perfect intention for how it ends. Instead, they just have to drive it to a conclusion. They just have to send it over. Just finish it. <laughs> yeah. Hence hence why they made a whole other season to add more shit. Because <laughs> apparently they weren't done. Um, that only reaffirms my thoughts on that. But Oh, God. Um, yep. Yuki Yuna is over. For now. Got any hypotheticals? I do. But I also have themes. I'm sorry to drag this out longer. Okay. What's your <laughs> hey, themes? Real quick, qu- real quick question. Do you want there to be more Yuki Yuna? Yes, I do. I fucking... <laughs> I, 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 it's stupid that I want there to be, but I'm just waiting. I'm waiting <laughs> for a season to come out and fucking hit all the notes. If Yuki Yuna season four comes out and it's great, I will redact every statement I said. I will watch it. I will watch it from the get go. <laughs> they got us. They got us. Maybe this is why everybody bought Blu-rays. I don't know. There's something. There's something cloyingly addictive about this series and its failure to to execute. Um. Okay, themes. Together alone. I remember everybody, you gotta do this together. But when it comes down to brass tacks, yeah, you he's gotta be the one to punch it. Um and don't worry, she'll punch it hard enough. Um, and that will make change. Not like, you know, systemically dismantling a set of toxic expectations we have about religion and, and society. Um not like you know, adjusting systems of how we live or anything like that. Um, don't worry. Yuki will punch it. Um, remember Sentinels? We're a team, but Mebuki's gonna do the heavy lifting most of the time. Um, remember, Takashima showed me that there's more than one way to succeed in life. You know, we, we sparred, and I learned from her that Maybe I was a little short-sighted. Maybe I should open myself up. Um, but also, uh, there's no way that she likes me uh, because uh, Wakaba is hanging out with her, with me, which means she likes her and not me. Um, and I can't confide in her or Wakaba anymore. Um, and I trust no one from this, um, despite any past things. Um which, like, I guess I, I know I'm doing kind of a bit here, but to sidestep a little bit, because it's important to talk about. I realize that emotional permanence is sometimes difficult to manifest, um, and that some people really struggle with that. You know, um, I empathize with that greatly. Uh, you know, I, I'm, it's not something that I'm, I feel I'm out of the loop on. That being said, I do not think Yuki Yuna is taking that problem to bat, <laughs> and it's not saying anything useful about it um it's just using its characters as pawns um remember karin you've been moping about your perceived failures but this is not the real you the real you is shaking yourself out of it because you're better than this um so don't 
don't rely on me. Only rely on yourself. Um, even though the reason why we do this is because we do it together. Such a weird, conflicted narrative that they have, where it's like very clearly it's supposed to be about you know uniting and working together, but so much of the substance of the series just flies in the face of that. Um, military apologia question mark, um, which also ties into anti colonialism question mark. Um, this is something I feel like they could have had and didn't expand on, but I, you know, maybe this at least proves that I'm attempting to generate thoughtful discourse about this show. Um, I do think it's interesting that they have like Togo's nationalism, um, a world in which there's a tightening barrier around their society, um, in which, you know, the area around it is foreign and unlivable. Um, I think it's interesting that they have a, a side story about um, people, you know, uh, sacrificing their lives to fight to reclaim that land and in the process not being respected. Um, and then, you know, starting a, uh, a publicity campaign um, in order to revert that course. Um, this is on a knife's edge. We're depending on how we're depicting and interpreting um, the world of Yuki Yuna that we're either seeing like a very nationalistic head that's like let's reclaim our foreign glory uh former glory uh we deserve this uh we will defeat the faceless speechless oppressors um we are stronger than them yet we are also weak enough to be threatened by them to the point where we must destroy every last essence of them. Um, and if you call us out for participating in deadly warfare and exploiting uh, lives, then we're going to be mad about that uh, for for you pointing that out. Um, and there's no productive discourse on that. It could be about, like, hell, it could be about Christianity, maybe. Like, well, you could also... I I I, ha- I I have I I I don't know if there's enough tact for this to be a thing, but there is a a large religious uh uh group uh in uh and in specific eras in, uh specific areas in Asia, um and. Uh, like in Korea and Japan, called the Moonies. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if you m- know much about the Moonies, um, nope. but they're uh, the Holy Spirit Association for the Univers- Unification of World Christianity, um, and they are a uh, death cult uh, that has had a lot of political power, and. Uh, in the in 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 Japan, so is so, this the thing that Abe was affiliated with? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Maybe may, maybe you know like there's some check boxes there, <laughs> like especially like on the sense that like you know if if we're gonna get Christianity mixed in here, there's a lot that happens that in Yuki Yuna that sort of mirrors that where it's like. Here's here's a sort of singular godly presence that we depend on, as opposed to a polytheistic one. Um, you should martyr yourself for it. You should sacrifice yourself, give yourself up to it. Also, it loves you and it cares for you, but you need to give everything that you have to it. Um, also, maybe sort of marry yourself to it in a sort of holy matrimony. Like, there's like... There could be something there, you know, like, mm-hmm. but I, I don't think that there's the substance for it. I mean, there's, there's fucking fiery hell, right? Like, I, you give us enough time and we could workshop, I think, a convincing theory or theories about what Yuki Yuna could actually be about, but I would never have confidence in any of them actually being real, you know? 
Mm-hmm. I think I would have to get to know the authors better. I think I'd have to understand more Japanese cultural context. Um, I can't do this all on my own here, you know? And maybe we're just, you know, maybe we are culturally too far out of the loop to know if there's a, a more profound message here. But it does, it feels like it doesn't cohere, right? There's so much that's already kind of conflicting with itself. I don't get the impression that this show is ready to have a a firm like message or moral um aside from the ones that I've already you know stated yes could didn't <laughs> that's really what it comes down to yeah that's basically Yuki and in a nutshell it's yeah it's <laughs> it is it could have been good but it decided to not be uh I think Yuki Yuna is still worth a watch, though. I know that's a weird thing to say after we basically <laughs> trashed on it. I I think it is one of those shows that if you if you want to to see a show just kind of fail miserably at doing anything correctly, but still have a good time, I think Yuki Yuna is one of those. There are some fun moments sprinkled in there that can keep you keep you on your toes. Uh, but we did it. We finished Yuki Yuna as a hero. Yeah, it, it, I I think you make a cogent point. If you're an aspiring writer out there, um, I would say watch this show and analyze it. Don't just watch it for fun. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to learn from it, and not even just its failures, but also its successes. Yeah, I think that the one of the reasons I like Yuki Yuna in a way is because the character interactions are so damn charming. And they always have been. And that's kind of why this season sucked, because they rarely did anything with the characters that are that have good chemistry together. Uh, mm-hmm. But when you have the main cast doing goofy shit, I like it. And it's a good way to show... Like I, I think it's a, a pretty good... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess example of how you can write larger casts interacting with each other and it be fun. Um, yeah. I think it's good at that. I think everything else kind of fails, but it's it's fine. Yeah, I think it's good to find media like this that doesn't just conform to your main preferences and flavors. You know, like because then you have to really like buckle down and try to understand why some things work and why some things don't there's a lot of times where if i find something that's so me it's just like yes i like everything about this i can't talk to people about it because i have nothing to say i'm just like i loved it 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 was everything i wanted this was great and that was excellent and that was perfect but i can't like i can't conjure like a, a relative basis for like why this thing is important to anyone but me right um it checks my boxes so well that i can't sort of separate it into a social discussion but something like yuki yuna where you're constantly flip-flopping back and forth between you know like varying tones and like sub you know subconscious messaging and um just like even like um heck the fact that you don't get to sit with the same characters all that often the way you're torn around kind of forces you to move into an analytical mindset um it's it's very difficult to become immersed in this series for me um and as a result if if you want to sort of exercise your writing analysis chops i'd say go for it like clearly like and this has a well-established enough fan base that i think that if you wanted to have some starter examples of say what people like and don't like with it then you've got a discussion there right there's some life there that you can tap into yeah all right hypotheticals uh, if you could add an unnecessary side story about some mooks and uh, a show, what show would you uh, add an unnecessary side story about some mooks? Oh, wow. That's a very broad question. Um, now I have to think about media I like and would want to transform. Um, 
let's see. Did you have something in mind that you wanted to run with? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, but I kind of can. I can kind of, kind of go for it. Um, sure. Fuck. Nope. <laughs> um, let's see what what show doesn't need mooks. Right, Magia Record kind of did that. Um, mm-hmm. but I I honestly wouldn't mind seeing a. Uh, damn see i came at you with this question expecting you to have an answer and i myself don't have an answer you know what a full metal alchemist brotherhood spinoff where we focus on some of the uh, the just the regular ass dudes doing military work fair i mean we have a couple episodes with it and they're fun but if we if we gotta if we gotta see some like large-scale battles with that but that seems necessary trigun just like follow some fucking pieces of shit. And you're in just an like, episode where you don't get any Vash, you don't get any, you know, of the insurance girls, you don't get uh, uh, Wolfwood, you don't get anyone. <laughs> you just have to, here's here's a town trying to solve a problem without them. <laughs> and then, and then like, I don't know, they have like some major, you know, like victory. Like, we did it. We, we saved the town. And then, the episode ends on Vash entering and they just go to credits as everything's about to get destroyed in the next one. I would love that. Um, Let me think. I'm kind of looking through a list of things here. I was going to say just more Nichi Joe, you know, but like that city. So you know what? Adapt the, the manga city into an anime that would be would that, that would be really fun it, w- it would be interesting if like crazy shit didn't happen unless they were in proximity to the main characters and then the things got crazier <laughs> yeah yeah um let's see and if i'd have to pick something other than that then maybe like megalobox because so i think they've proved that they're really good at developing additional characters right i like to see characters that are maybe on the in the lower circuits or um just like the lifestyle of people in that show they clearly like care so much about the world that their those characters inhabit um and they like to get into critical topics so i feel like in a in a proper episodic fashion they'd be able to do something on the side that still feels meaningful um but doesn't feel like it takes the same sort of profound energy uh that uh the the main cast runs with you know yeah all right it's a great question grant um now you have to handle my hypotheticals i'm ready (laughs) all right hypothetical number one you can delete the washio sumi chapter or the great monkai chapter but not both which one goes great monkai chapter damn Easy peasy. Washio right. Sumi well, sucks ass, but at least it provided some context to the story. Uh, I I would rather something be fucking terrible than boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I'll oppose you on that. I think I would rather see Washio Sumi chapter just disappear. Because at least then I wouldn't have to confront Togo being a weird nationalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That That is a hard question. But that's why it's a question that we discuss on this show, Familiar Territory, where all the most important things happen in the span of an hour and a half or so. Um, okay, last hypothetical. You can't delete episodes or edit the content of the Great Monkai chapter, but you are allowed to reorder them. Would you? And if so, what would be your director's cut? Uh, I would start off with the... Fuck. I'm putting you to work. Fuck it, we ball. I'd put the epilogue in the first episode. And then I would... I, I would do the ending episode... The, the fight episode. And then I would start off with the, the past hero episodes, but not the last one. And then I would do the rest of the series, and the finale would be the last... The last hero episode. 
<laughs> well, damn. It would be so fucking bad. <laughs> but I it would can't top that. But at least it would be interesting. If 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 you yeah, really wanted to do it, you would you would have the the heroes. See, the problem is, is you need to have the part where Togo gets her erased from existence and then wakes up to find out she hasn't been erased from existence. That one episode, there's a whole wrench in your plan. Because you could say, you start out with the past heroes, then you go into the Sentinel shit and finish it up. But then, you have to bring in the fact that Togo's memory gets memory wiped at one point. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just trying to sort of linearize some of it. Um, That's why I decided to make it worse. (laughs) (laughs) See, it's not so easy to write Yuki Yuna. Yuki Yuki Yuna is a metaphysical conundrum. Yep. Yep. I will, I I I would I kind of want it to be worse. If it's not going to be good, I want it to be bad. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> okay. Grant, what's next? Oh, what's next? Well, we have two shows we're currently watching. I think the next one we should do a positive review and as long as the show does not drop the ball in the last 3 episodes, I believe we'll probably do Undead Girl Murder Farce. Mm-hmm. It 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 has been my anime of the season. Yeah, probably of anime the two we've been watching. Probably anime of the year. <laughs> maybe yeah, it's, it's maybe been... what what came out that I liked? Well, we had Witch from Mercury finished. This oh year. yeah, fuck yeah, never mind. Uh, but yeah, but <laughs> so quick to turn. Yeah, it's great. Uh, thank y'all for joining us. If you liked what you listened to, you can check out some of our other really good videos, including our four-hour-long <laughs> review on Danganronpa V3. Uh, that one, that one's really fun, and it has one of my favorite moments in our entire podcast history. Um, mm-hmm. you can also check out our Twitch channel if you want to hear us talk more. Uh, we do we twi- we we Twitch stream every week. Right now we're playing through Ghost Trick, uh, but we we like to sprinkle in some weird shit every once in a while. We're sort of a variety streamer. We're here for the vibes, not the games. Uh, you can check us out on Twitter dot com. Maybe I haven't. I tweeted a couple times in this week. I'm not a very good follow because I hate that <laughs> damn website, but. It helps me keep in contact with some things, so. So, yeah. You can do all those things, or don't, because we are not your dads. 